Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics video series on group theory. In this video, I'm going to talk about kernels of homomorphisms, quotient groups, and normal subgroups. So, one of the, one of the more important uh, subgroups associated with any group homomorphism is called the kernel of that subgroup. If we have a homomorphism, homomorphism phi from G to H, and if H has identity element E prime, for, uh, instead of E, which will be in G. Uh, then the kernel, written cur phi of G, uh, of sorry, phi, is the set of elements in G which are sent to E prime under the, homomorph under the homomorphism phi. This is all the elements which go to the identity. So if we think about this, this is going to be a subgroup rather than just a subset of G because if So if A and B are both in the kernel of phi, then, uh, the, then phi of their product, because homomorphism with respect group structure, is going to be uh, the product of phi of A and phi of B. Each of those have to be the identity of, of H E prime, and the identity times the, times the identity is the identity. So A B uh, is mapped by phi to E prime, and thus A B is also in the kernel of, home, in, in the kernel of phi. Similarly, uh, A inverse A inverse is mapped to phi of A inverse, which is E prime inverse, which is E prime. So A inverse is also in the kernel of phi. Uh, uh, one basic fact is that the kernel of an isomorphism is always just the set that contains only the identity, uh, the identity E of G. Because uh, if, if phi is an isomorphism, then it has to be injective, so it can only map one thing to one thing. And a homomorphism, uh, and therefore an isomorphism, will always take the identity to the identity, so nothing else can go to the identity in H. So another useful property of the kernel is that the kernel is a normal subgroup. Um, uh, what, what this means is that if H If H is a normal subgroup of G, and we write H um, and this symbol, which look, looks, looks a bit like a triangle and a less than symbol, to write H as a normal subgroup of G, this means that uh, for all H in H and G in G, this means that the conjugation of H by G, which is when you multiply H by G on one side and G inverse on the other side, that any of those conjugations will be in H. Now, this doesn't mean that, um, that H has to commute with G. Uh, if it did commute with G, then this equals, would equal uh, H G, G inverse equals H, which is obviously in H because H is in H. Um, th uh, this property itself doesn't, uh, doesn't always imply this. Um, what this means is that uh, G commutes with H as a whole. So if we, if we write the coset, in this case it's a left coset because G is on the left, which is equal to the set of the products of G on the left with every element in H. Uh, this left coset will equal the, the equivalent right coset, uh, which is defined similarly. Uh, so this means that um, that H times itself, because uh, you can sort of do this with two sets, and uh, then just take 
the, the product of every element of weight, the, the, the set of all products of two, two digit elements of H, that's going to be H itself again because H is closed. So this means that H times H is equal to H, and H commutes with every element of G. Here I'm talking about a capital H rather than any lowercase h that's inside H. In this sense, the, the subgroup H acts like the identity of G in a sense which will become useful pretty soon. So the reason normal subgroups are useful uh, and once again, any kernel of a hom homomorphism is a normal subgroup, which will come up shortly. The reason normal subgroups are useful is that the coset spaces, uh, so the, the set of so the coset, the left coset space is the set of all these cosets uh, by elements in G of H. This when H is a normal subgroup, this has group structure. So if A and B are in G, then we can make the product A H B H. Uh, so what we can do, uh, so, uh, so th th this is the set of all A H B K for H and K in H. Because H is a normal subgroup, any AHBK, um, well, first of all, we note that um, since H is in the normal subgroup H, then B inverse HB equals some H star, which is also in H. This all, uh, we can multiply on by B on the left and B inverse on the right to get H equals B H star B inverse, and that means that a H B K equals A B H star B inverse B K equals A B H star K. And this is in the coset A B H, where A B is the product generally by is the product of A and B, because H star K, those are both an H, and so their product must be an H. If H, if if the um, if the subgroup H weren't normal, then this this process would fail for some uh, A and B, and you'd get an element that was outside of uh, the coset A B H, and then the whole thing falls apart. But since we're no, since we're working with normal subgroups, the set of all left cosets, which are the same as right cosets, it's a normal subgroup, becomes a group, um, and this group. is written as the quotient group G mod H, uh, where mod is the same, where the, uh, the over line is written, uh, is pronounced as mod. Um, obviously, some of these cosets are going to be the same as each other, because um, if, sorry, A H equals B H, whenever A inverse B is in H. And this doesn't always have to be identity, because uh, if, A, if A H will equal um, A times since H Multiplying into H doesn't uh, doesn't change any of the elements in H because H is closed during multiplication by elements itself. But if H is A inverse B, then you get A times A inverse B, which is going to be equal to B H. So we have our G mod H, uh, but what we can do here is we can we can make a homomorphism. Uh, call it pi for proje for projection. Where pi of G equals G H. Um, this, the, the kernel of pi here is just going to be H because uh, anything, that's get, any, any, anything that's not in H will uh, produce a coset that's not uh, the identity element of G mod H, which is just the coset H. Um, anything that is in H will get set, will, you'll get a lowercase h, uppercase h, uh, and lowercase h is in uppercase h, so that's just the coset h or eh when e, where e is the, e is the identity of eg. 
But more importantly, um, because any, uh, any kernel of a homomorphism is a normal subgroup, we can do a pretty interesting thing with that. So if you write some homomorphism phi from G to J, where G and J are groups, the kernel of phi is a normal subgroup of G, and so we can form the quotient group G mod uh, curve phi. Uh, and then we'll, we'll call this, this, we'll call curve phi h, so it's easier to say. This homomorphism is, again, pi. Uh, it, it just sends uh, x and g to xh in g mod h. So what we can do here is we, make, we can make another homomorphism defined in terms of phi, we'll call it, phi tilde from g mod h to j. And what this is going to be, how we're going to, how we're going to find this is say that, we'll say that phi tilde of x h equals phi of x. Now, because every element in x h is going to be of the form x times some member of h, they're all going to get sent to the same thing by uh, all those elements, when considering that as a subset of G, are going to get sent to the same element of J by phi. So this thing is well defined, and it sends everything in X H, uh, and thus the um, the member of G mod H X H itself to the singleton element of J, uh, which is phi of X. Uh, symbolically. Additionally, if if phi of x equals phi of y, then that means that phi of x y inverse. is the identity of j. And this thing means that x, y inverse is going to be an element of h, which first means that x, h, and y, h are the same coset. So if, two different, so if you have two different cosets in g mod h, those will be sent to different elements of j by, uh, by phi tilde. And this means that uh, while well, this is While well, pi is surjective in that it's on to and that um, it, 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 every element of g mod h is sent to by some element of g, uh, phi tilde is an injective. An injective homomorphism, uh, which, has, uh, which itself has kernel, uh, just, the just the identity element of g mod h. Uh, and we can, we can also make, uh, we can also turn this uh, we, we can also factor this further into an isomorphism and another more natural injection. So this says that uh, G mod H, this is again the same thing, G mod H is isomorphic under phi tilde to the image of phi in, uh, the image of phi of G inside J. So that's just going to be every, the, the subgroup of every element uh, which is sent to by some element in G by phi. And then image of, the image of phi is naturally injectively contained inside J via the inclusion map iota. This is a homomorphism. And this whole diagram that I've just gone through is an important result that's known as the first isomorphism theorem. Thank you for watching this video in our series on group theory. Click down there to view our playlist containing the rest of the videos in this series. Click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can not miss any more of a Center of Math videos. And click here to visit our website to check out more of our mathematics resources.